everyone, hope you're all doing well. Now, I was asked in one of the previous videos to just go through a couple of rigs that I use, just due to the fact that when you very first start perch fishing, especially using soft laws, using hard laws, it's quite easy, you just tie them on and away you go. But when you start using soft laws, there's many, many different rigs and it can get quite confusing quite quickly. So I thought I'd go through a few that will help you in your day-to-day -day perch fishing. So the first one, that I want to go through is your standard jigad and shad. That's probably what you're going to first start fishing on. Um, matching the size up, what we're looking at doing, this one's quite easy because it's got a bit of an indicator down the back. So that's the thick part there and then you've got the thin part for the movement of the tail. So you don't want to be going into the thin part, you want to be looking at matching it up so it's there or thereabouts. So what we look at doing is pushing the tip of the hook straight through the center. It's a bit hard because I'm looking through the camera. <laughs> so we're looking at, yeah, pushing the tip of the hook. I'll tell you what, I'll look around the side, make, make it a bit easier. Yeah, right through the center of the soft plastic there. And we're looking at pushing it all the way through the center. And I still get this wrong quite regularly as you'll probably see on the end product, but that should, when that pushes through, should be okay. Now you see that's a bit wonky, that's because I've pushed it through the soft plastic on a bit of an angle. So try and push it through the center, right through the middle. And it will curl up on you, it'll do all that kind of thing, but try and push it through the middle. Try and get it straight. There we go. That's a little bit better. Still not perfect, but it's fishable. It's doable. So that would catch you some fish, and that's just your standard jigad rig. You know, you could fish that, pulling it straight through the water, getting the tail to kick. You can fish it on a sort of an up and down where you let it drop and carry on. You can do pretty much whatever retrieve you fancy. What I tend to do with these is cast out let it drop right down to the bottom, give it a steady retrieve back across the bottom to start with. Um, then you can start varying it, you can start mixing it up a little bit, you can start going, letting it drop down to the bottom, bringing it back up a touch, letting it drop back down. You can not let it sink all the way down to the bottom and count it down so it's a few feet away from the bottom once you realize how long it takes to sink to the bottom. Let's say it sinks five seconds, you can let it sink for four and start bringing it across you can let it sink for three start bringing it across you can do whatever you want really it's a really really versatile little rig the only time that i would say that this would be less effective is when the water temperature gets really 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 cold when those perch are sat on the bottom and they're not wanting to do anything if you pull that straight past them they're not they probably won't even have time to bloody look at it you know what i mean or they might look at it and away it goes so yeah, but on its day, your shad will catch you some big perch. Right guys, so the next one I'm gonna be looking at is your Ned rig. Now, the only difference between this and the shad is if you look at this jig head, it's rounded on the bottom, flat on top. Some of them will be flat on the bottom. And the reason for that is because we're using floating soft plastic on a Ned rig, you want it to sit up on the bottom. So once you cast out, It'll sit up on the bottom, and this will be sat directly upwards like that. And I'll tell you the reason for that in a minute, but rigging is very, very much the same as what the shad is. So we're looking at lining it up. That's an all right size. These soft plastics, these Z-Man soft plastics, are a little bit harder to rig than what a normal soft plastic is, but usually go dark side up at the top so we're going to be going through there and back out the back push it through try and get it right down the center right down the center push it right down to about there there we go about. pop it back through and try to straighten all this plastic up now with the z-man soft plastic if you push it up over that hook keeper, it'll just bunch up. So what you need to do is pinch it and pull it. Just like that, there we go. So that, as you can see from the top there, isn't 
perfect, but it's, it's not far off. You know, to be honest, if I was going to fish it, I'd probably take it off and re-rig it so it's exactly straight all the way down the middle, but I'm a bit funny when it comes to things like that. But with this one, what we're looking at doing, casting out, letting it hit the bottom and letting it stand. And then bumping it along a little bit, letting it stand. We're just lifting the rod tip or giving it a little twitch back, letting it stand. And that really comes into its own when the temperatures really cool down, when, when it gets very, very, very cold. So you look in, you winter perch fishing, you identify where the fish are, cast out, let it sit. And it just gives these slow, lethargic fish time to come round identify what's going on and fingers crossed have a little inquiry of what's going on there but as i say uh, cast out let it hit the bottom and you don't need particularly to do anything with it it looks weird it looks like it shouldn't catch fish but it does the flow of the water if you're fishing a river will make the top of that switch around just a little bit even if you're in a, a lake or anything any inquiry any tail swishing by will make that tip of the tail just swish around and as I say just bumping it back little bits by little bits or even dragging it across the bottom making a bit of a, a silt trail can be enough to get a fish to inquire so that is the Ned Rig. So yeah moving on now to one of my personal favourites is the Cheb Rig or Chebrushka whichever one. Um, so you'll need an EWG hook. These Cheb weights, they come with a little clip that looks like that and a little weight with a slot in it. And what that does, the clip slots into the weight, but first what we do is we put our hook on. Now the way that we do that is we get the hook, we pop it onto that little bit of wire and we want see how that's angled up some of them aren't some of them are just straight clips all the way through they might have a little lump on the end but how that clip is angled upwards there we want the hook to be able to travel up that so this bit is going to be on the top of your soft plastic but you want to be able to have that hinge movement and that is the beauty of this rig is that it does give plenty of movement it's an articulated rig so if you can start angling that downwards as you can see let's say your hook's on the other way that's pointing up it's gonna you know it's gonna hinder the movement but the beauty of this one I'll just pop this weight back on it's the way you put the weight on anyway so just pop that on there slide that through and that's that now the beauty of this one is the fact that it does have all that movement so I tend to fish this when I'm fishing soft plastic uh, floating soft plastics it tends to when you cast out the weight will sit on the bottom and the hook will tend to rise up so I fish the majority of my floating soft plastics like this one is a little uh, crazy flapper I think it's called you say, oh no it's not it's a crazy fish nimble I'm lying crazy flappers are the Kitech, Kitech whatever they are ones so that's a crazy fish nimble so what we do how we hook this on that's the top of the bait as you can see that line that runs centrally all the way down the back. So what we're looking at doing is, again, go through the center, always going through the center with these, pop it through a little bit, and then we're coming out of the bottom of the bait this time, just a touch, just there, if you can see that. Yeah, and then we feed it through, push the hook through, now, at this point, you want to pull it through and just give it a little twist so it sits like that. And then all we have to do is feed this hook through the bait, through the bottom again. There we go. And just pop it through so it goes through that central channel we are left with something like that. The hook's a little bit big for the bait, but it's just for demonstration purposes. But yeah, we're left with something like that. So still a little bit exposed there because I can still nick my finger on it. But what you do is push the plastic down a little bit, lift up, 
and then just pull it back over just so it nicks into the back of the plastic. Now that is a what they call the weedless rig. You may well still get snagged up with it, but you know it's more weedless than what let's say that is. Even though I'd use it for similar sort of purposes, like fishing similar methods, that'll get snagged up more than what that will. So yeah, as I say, the way that I'd fish it, cast out, it'll hit the bottom, but with it being articulated, with it having that little joint there, the floating soft plastic will rise up, so it'll sit on the bottom, with these tentacles in the air, flapping about, giving it whatever, and then bump it along again, bump it along again, bump it along again. And do the same thing, just rinse and repeat, just vary the time that you're gonna be leaving it on the bottom for. Uh, vary the length of how far you're bumping it back towards you. Just little lifts of the rod tip. And just remember whatever, if you've got a tight line, whatever you lift the rod tip is how far that law is gonna be coming back towards you. So if you're gonna lift it two foot, it's gonna come back two foot towards you. If you're gonna lift it, an inch, two inches. That's how far the law is going to come back. So obviously you vary that on how lethargic the fish are, how cold it is. That's pretty much it really. But yeah, it's one of my favourite rigs that because it is so versatile. You can use floating soft plastic, you can use normal soft plastic, you can put it on shads, you can put it on creature baits, you can put it on pretty much anything. It is really, really good. I mean, the thing that put me off it initially, I mean, it'll put a lot of anglers off you'd look at that and go how the bloody hell is that supposed to hook a fish you can't see the hook you can't see the hook point but trust me when they hit it that hook point will become exposed very very easy never had a deep hooked fish with this so it's quite good it tends to go down and then catching the lip bang there you go so that's that. So the fourth one that I'm going to show you is a Texas rig. Now, it's very, very similar in the way that it's set up really to a Chev rig. Now you take your soft plastic, you've got your EWG hook. Again, you want to be sort of matching this up where the bend is, matching it up to the thick part of the body. You don't want it going over the body because then it's you sort of miss the point of uh, having the weedless hook but again you'd hook this on exactly the same way as what you would do in shed rig so you push it down into the body right down the center have the hook come out of the bottom like that push it round round the bend haha <laughs> just got myself bugger push it round give it a little twist so it's coming out of the bottom like that not the straightest but it'll do for the time being and then bend the plastic back just like that. Pop the hook through the plastic and then just push it back through. So we are left with that. That's shooting out the top a little back, just a little bit, just give it a pull back, lift up, and then that's perfect. Now the difference is with this one. What we're going to do, just to demonstrate, I'm going to take a little bit of line off. Let's see much because I don't need. I'm not actually setting a rig up. Give it a little snip. Now I'm going to tie this line to the eye. What I'm going to do, I'm going to use a little rapala knot, I think it's called. So make a little loop in the line similar to a rapala knot anyway if it's not so make a little loop in the line push it through the eye and then it's kind of like a half blood knot from here so I'm gonna feed it over two or three well three four times something like that one two three say four and then this little bit here got the loop there and you've got this little bit so what then we do then just pop it through that little bit you might be able to see it that little bit there not through the original loop that we made but through the loop that's above it pop it through and 
then I'm not going to moisten it we all know to moisten knots but then you're left with that and then we pull it down from the tag end we don't pull it down normally as we would do with the normal blood knot because we're still trying to keep that loop so we pull it down from the tag end Let's see if I can do this without causing myself a mischief pull it from the tag end there we go and that just creates if you can see there it just keeps a little loop just above where your knot is when I trim it off you might be able to see it a little bit better just give it a quick trim give it a trim lad give it a trim there we go Yeah, just creates a little loop just above. And then what we do, go the other way and we take our Texas weight or a bullet weight or whatever you want to call it. We thread that onto the line. Thread that down so it will sit on the bottom like that. Yeah, so then what I do, get these little guru float stops and I cut one in half only because they're, they're a bit big really you can get different sizes of them but I cut one in half and then they tend to butt up quite nicely against the end of that uh, Texas weight just find the end of this line there we go yeah so just pop the end of the line through your leader obviously you have to do this before you tie all your leader on and everything like that Pull that float stop onto the line, or the half a float stop onto the line. Pull it all the way down, and then you've got a perfectly pinned little Texas rig. And if you wanted to have a little bit more movement, I suppose you could pull your float stop up, or you could have it butted up right against the Texas weight. And you're still going to get plenty of movement with that, unless you really pin it right down, and then it does limit the movement slightly. Still has a hell of a lot of movement, that rig. A little bit less than what the Cheb does, but I'd still fish them in very, very similar ways. I'd just change the plastic. You know, I'd use the floating plastic on the Cheb rig. I'd use the sinking plastic on the Texas. So, yeah, that's that. Right, guys, I hope you found that useful. It's just four rigs and four techniques, well, the techniques to go along with the rig rigs, really, that I've found have improved my perch fishing and have really helped me. Um, you've got a couple that are quite similar with the jig heads and you've got a couple that are quite similar with the EWG hooks but there are slight differences and there are little little bits and bobs that you wouldn't really think of as a beginner perch fisherman that can make a huge difference so as I say a little bit of my knowledge I'm not saying it's perfect I'm not saying it's right I'm not you know just my experience and just trying to impart a bit of knowledge for someone who might need it so do us a favor as well keep an eye out because recently we've reached a thousand subs which i'm really chuffed about so i'm going to be doing a little giveaway it's not going to be mega amounts but it'll be worth getting so yeah keep an eye out for that but with all that being said i will catch you in the next one guys cheers mm -hmm.